Hallelujah. Leonard Cohen and his unwanted fame. As written about Leonard in I'm Your Man, The Life of Leonard Cohen by Sylvie Simmons, the genius behind such classic songs as Suzanne, Bird on the Wire, and of course, Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen has been one of the most important and influential songwriters of our time. A man of spirituality, emotion, and intelligence, whose work has explored the definitive issues of human life, sex, religion, power, meaning, and love. Leonard never wanted to be famous. He only ever wanted to be a poet. His poetry was a little bit out there, like this one from the book Selected Poems, 1956 to 1968. A person who eats meat. A person who eats meat wants to get his teeth into something, a person who does not eat meat wants to get his teeth into something else. If these thoughts interest you for even a moment, you are lost. Leonard Cohen never wanted to be famous, as can be seen here in the interview in 1988. Bubbles, and uh, I received pretty good reviews for those novels, but I couldn't pay my rent. In hindsight, it seems like a mad decision that I was going to rectify my economic situation by becoming a singer. And it was the combination of wanting to pay the bills and the meeting of Judy Collins, who gave him his first chance of performing on stage, that Cohen began his unwanted fame. Judy Collins befriended Cohen and gave him his first big break as a singer and songwriter. I feel extremely close to Leonard. We've been in some extremely intimate situations, not ever as lovers. I met her in New York as uh, part of this moment when I came down to New York on my way to Nashville. And I was introduced to her by a woman named Mary Martin. And uh, I sang a few songs for her that she didn't like particularly, but she liked something about them. And she said, you know, if you write anything else, call me. So when I finished Suzanne, I telephoned her from Montreal and I sang it to her over the phone. Alice Cashmore, in her book Celebrity Culture, writes, Celebrity athletes and musical celebs are worshipped more intensely than other kinds of celebrities, according to McCutcheon et al. Their fans sometimes air events a mixture of empathy with the celebrity's success and failures, over-identification with the celebrity, compulsive behaviours, as well as an obsession and details of the celebrity life. This was true for Leonard Cohen. In 1993, after a relationship breakup and the end of a tour, Leonard moved to a monastery. He had had enough of fame. And the reason he gave for Lee going to the monastery was for love. Not so much a love for Buddhism and the idea of living as a monk, but love of Roshi the old man with whom he could sit in silence on this broken hill. The Roshi that I remembered. So several months later I came back again and uh, then I began to study with him and practice with him. I, I began to study seriously about 30 years ago. Th that is spending, you know, several months of the year with him all the time. Uh, in 1993, I think it was, I, I moved into the Zen Center on Mount Baldy. And afterwards, I was ordained as a, as a monk of Roshi's. Autumn 1998. Lennon had been living in the monastery for six years and was as thin as the air, and his long black robes hung loosely on his body. This was when he found that his money had been stolen. All of his retirement money and charitable trust funds had been emptied, between 10 and 13 million US dollars, by his manager while he was in the mountains. He was also left with a very large tax bill. In his late 60s, Leonard had no choice but to publish his book, Book of Longing. Cohen never wanted this celebrity, as The Guardian writes. Cohen never talked up his own importance. He often said he was just making the most of the limited talents he had been given and hoping that whatever insights he had gleaned could be useful to the listener. Songwriting was his way of making sense of a bewildering world and dissolving the loneliness. Leonard Cohen died in 2016, 
aged 82. Bono from U2 summed up Leonard Cohen's life by saying, just think, think of Leonard. He called us friends. Really, we were just fans. That was okay by me.